spettert. En het is een enorme dialoog tussen de instrumenten en ook een soort plek voor oververstreed. Nou willen wij onze solo, nou de viool solo, en het, maar niet, zonder, zonder gemeen te zijn. Het is, een, het is vanuit vrolijkheid. It's quite interesting because it's sort of a, yeah, a funny mix between a concerto grosso and a trio sonata and a violin concerto all in one. Yeah. And I feel slightly apologetic playing, um, I think it's about um, 70 bars into it. It's the first big obvious solo of the solo violin. And, and the solo violin just takes up a whole 40, like a big chunk of, of the concerto. Just stops every, he stops everyone. <laughs> and just keeps playing and playing and playing and playing and just won't stop playing. So I always feel slightly apologetic and embarrassed when I come to that part. But but I mean, but that's the point, you know, that it really, you know, it's a little bit like the Brandenburg Five in that way. He just, you know, pushes everybody aside and says, here, you know, I'm going to show you what I can do. But then again, you know, it's sort of this trio element between the two flutes and and so it's really, um, and also of course the textures that you find within, it's, it's really, if you try to listen to everything, which I was trying to do in the rehearsals, it's sometimes you, you, you go, you become a little bit dizzy from, from, the, from all the action that's taking place. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's, it's really a very unique uh, piece in that way. For this particular version, we have, um, I think one thing that's that's very important to, to mention straight away is um, that it's one to a part. Not only because um, it emphasizes the individuality of each voice, but also balance-wise. Um, often in my part I wrote down piano or less in consideration of the uh, recorders, but in this version I didn't have to do any of them. So just really, um, you hear everything transparent, and um, so I think I'm, I'm very convinced about this uh, one to a part. And also the fact that um, I'm separate from the rest of the string. So you hear and also see the, the different parts and how different each of the parts are. I think that's also very important to, to distinguish because if, if I'm in the, in the orchestra, so next to, the, next to the, the strings, I think, yes, you can hear it, but I think it's less exciting to see, to see um, yeah, a lot of uh, ping-ponging going back and forth. <laughs> Die, die zet heel vaak plofluiten in cantates in, en dat doet hij ook in het vierde Brandenburgsconcert, uh, op één partij, unisono. En dat heeft mij altijd verbaasd, want de blofluit is met name het instrument wat zeer snel op blaassnelheid, blaasdruk, zeg maar, reageert. Als je een beetje harder blaast, zoals we dat in het Nederlands plegen te zeggen, dan wordt de toon meteen wat hoger. Als je wat zachter blaast, dan zakt de toon. En dat gaat ontzettend snel. En als je dus unisono speelt, het is nauwelijks te doen om het perfect zuiver te krijgen. Want als je eventjes gaat flippen en denkt ik ga een mooie crescendo maken en de ander doet het niet zo, dan ben je meteen heel duidelijk te hoog en de ander te laag en dan wordt het gewoon kraaivals. Dus hij laat de blokletist eigenlijk voortdurend ook nog in zijn discipline van blazen van de toeti naar het solo gaan. Even when the solo violin again is going completely insane with this, with the passages and things, even then, you know, the others have also very interesting parts to play. And so, um, sort of having a, you know, if you have it on a TV screen, it's not just one shot, but it's a split screen, and yeah. and you have one <laughs> half, you know, it's sort of like that. You you're kind of look, you have to, you can't miss any of the action. That's really the strong point yeah. of this piece. Yeah.